Well, hello, artists. So today, we're going to talk about labyrinths. And if you, uh, if you haven't already, um, I want you to go and look at the Google slides that I made on the page. Um, and it gives you um, an understanding of what the difference between a labyrinth and a maze. And there's a big difference. And a lot of people will interchange those words and they think it means the same thing. But a labyrinth and a maze are two very different things. So if you haven't checked out the Google slide, um, go ahead and do that before you watch the video. It sort of gives you a better understanding of what it is we're doing today. Now, labyrinths are um, I didn't get that. one path that leads all the way to the center. And a maze will have twists and turns and dead ends and lots of different ways you could go. And it's a puzzle. It's designed to get you lost. But a labyrinth is not. It's one path and it leads and twists and turns, but you follow this one path to the center and then back out again. Now labyrinths have been found all over the world um, and they date back as old as 3,000 years. Uh, we find labyrinths in India, all over Europe, uh, North America. Um, there are some famous Greek uh, myths and legends uh, that involve a labyrinth and a minotaur. If you haven't heard of that, you might want to go check that out. Um, so let's make a labyrinth. Now, I have on the website a download that I made. Um, it's two pages and it's called Labyrinth Seeds. It's like the very beginning to make a labyrinth. And if you've not downloaded this and printed it off, you should go ahead and do that. Now, if you do not have a printer, um, some of these are more complicated, but some labyrinth seeds are very simple. This one, the easiest one, the one that we're gonna start with, is a simple plus sign or a cross, and there's a dot in the four corners. Okay, so if you don't have a way to print it off, uh, you can draw this labyrinth seed on a piece of paper. In fact, this is going to be our practice, and then we're going to draw one on paper, and you're going to design your own and see what we can come up with. You're going to need the labyrinth seed worksheet, um, a pencil, a piece of paper. Now I'm using um, a marker today so that you can see my lines and in fact I think I'm going to switch to a bright color so that you can see the difference between my lines and the labyrinth seed. Okay so let's start with the simplest one. Now when we create a labyrinth it's going to look like a maze but again it's got one path to the center. We always follow a pattern. There's a steady rhythm to making a labyrinth, and there's a steady rhythm of working your way or walking your way through a labyrinth. We always start at the top center, no matter what it looks like, okay? We start at the top center, and we will make a line that goes up, over, and connects to the first thing that we come in contact with. In this case, it's going to be this dot. Watch. I start in the top center, up, over, and connect to the dot. Now, I'll go to the left, and I'll go up, over, and go to the next thing I come in contact with. And for this one, it will be this part of the line. So watch. Up, 
over and I go in the same direction, I'm going clockwise and I connect. I go to the left, up, over, and I come in contact with the first thing I see, which is that dot. I always go to one to the left, work my way to the right. I'm going to the left, going to the right. Now there's a reason why people for 3,000 years have done this because when we go from the left to the right, from the left to the right, back and forth in a steady rhythm, we are going from left brain to right brain. It's called crossing the hemisphere of our brain. And what that does is once we do that often enough and we go in a steady rhythm, it balances our left and our right side of our brain and it creates a sense of calm and peace and tranquility. Now, let's see if it works. I'm gonna start with the entrance and I'm going to walk my way through the labyrinth. So I'm going to come up. I go up and down. I curve up and down and curve up, down and curve. So I was able to get to the center of my labyrinth. If I go one direction, now I'm going to go back. Some labyrinths are so large, you can find them inside of churches. People will make them a path out of stones outside or <clears throat> mow the grass in a way so that you can walk the path. And people will do that to meditate, to reflect. So if you ever feel stressed out, a labyrinth is a great way to sort of help you focus and calm and find some tranquility and peace. Now that was the easiest one. Let's try um, a more challenging labyrinth. I'm gonna switch colors here. This one has, if you notice, it looks very similar to the first one we did, but it does have these sort of L-shaped corners here, okay? So we have our cross, or plus sign, the four dots, but then we have these extra bits and that will make our labyrinth even larger. Now don't worry if your lines get so big that you cross over. Remember, this is a practice paper. We're not too worried about it. We always start, you got it, in the top center of our labyrinth seed we're going to go up and over. We'll scoot to the left, up and over. Scoot to the left, up and over. I'm gonna to go to the left. I always move one to the left to begin and I go clockwise to the right up and over and I will connect. I'm not skipping any, any points as I work my way across. Now, I'm taking a risk because I'm using a marker so if I make a mistake, and it happens, everybody makes a mistake, it's gonna be very difficult for me to disguise that mistake with this bright blue marker. Now what would I do to finish this? Over. And connect. 
So you can see by adding those four little bits, those points, look how much more complex, how longer the path is because of those four corners that we added. Now let's check our work. So I'm gonna use the end of my pen to walk my way through the labyrinth just to check <clears throat> twisting and turning and all these lines that we made and it all lines up in this really weird way to get to the center. Now, we did the first one, we did the second one. This one would be even larger because look, we've added two brackets. I'm gonna let you, if you want to try this one, um, I'm gonna let you do that on your own, but I'm going to move to the second piece of paper in our labyrinth seeds because not all labyrinth seeds need to look like a perfect plus sign or um, cross with dots. Some are more organic. Organic means it looks like it would be formed in nature. Uh, the others that we just did were geometric. They have measured lines. They were perfectly straight lines and dots um, in our labyrinth seeds. These look so very different than the first page, but it works exactly the same way. So I want to try it. Remember, we start always in the top center and we always go up and over to the right and connect. So I'm going to go up, over to the right. I move left, one space, up and over to the right. I'll move one space to the left, up, and over to the right. I always connect the very next part of the labyrinth seed. If I skip one, it will mess up the path. I never skip the end of a line. I never skip a dot. You can always pause the video and rewind it and go back and watch again. Oh, look at that. That looks very, very different than the others that we made on the first page. But it will still work the same way. One path, twisting and turning from left to right. This one has a really cool spiral until we get to the center. Did you notice that each time that we do this, the very first line that we draw creates the center of our labyrinth seed. Now this one looks very different from any of them. This almost reminds me of, of a spider, um, but it only has six legs instead of eight. Um, but we still start the exact same way. Top center, we're going to go up, over to the right and connect. And that's going to be the center of our labyrinth. 
up over to the right and connect go left up over to the right and connect there's something very calming about taking your time and following a rhythm a simple pattern now that one looks very different let's see if it still works so I'm going to walk the labyrinth come up Notice that I'm not going fast, it's not a race. If I want this to help my brain to focus and find calm and peace, that's not something that I race doing. I just enjoy the moment. And I enjoy the process of making it and walking the path of this labyrinth that I've made. And when you go into the labyrinth and out of the labyrinth, we're twisting and turning. We're using both hemispheres of our brain. And when you do it enough, it helps you find calm and peace. Now this one, I'm gonna let you try on your own. Remember, it starts the exact same way. The top center is always where you begin. So if you want to finish these, pause the video and if you're ready to move on um, you'll need a pencil or something to draw with and a sheet of um, a sheet of paper now, if you're using a marker like a sharpie like I'm doing today it'd be wise to put something underneath so in case it bleeds through you don't want um, to make a mess on the table. Now, when you make your own labyrinth seed, if, you, if you're just inventing one, you know, we always run the risk. Maybe, maybe it works out and maybe it doesn't and that's okay. Um, but here's the trick. Um, you need an even number. So the dots, the lines, those points, we need an even number. So let's draw one. Instead of using a pre-printed labyrinth seed, let's see what I can come up with. Uh, I'm gonna use red. And you know, I mentioned a spider earlier, and I wonder if we can make that happen. So I'm going to make a curved line. A curved line. How many legs does a spider have? Eight. And I'm going to put some dots. So I'm gonna put a dot here, and a dot there, and a dot here, and a dot there. And I'll need a dot between each of the lines. So if I have eight spider legs, I'll need eight dots so that I have a path that twists and turns. I'm going to turn this into a spider. Or a spooky spider. So 
So let's see. I I will be honest with you. I um, have not done this. So I have no idea what this labyrinth is going to look like. We'll call it the Great Spider Labyrinth. I'm going to change colors so that it doesn't get confusing. Let's see what happens here. I always start in the top center. Remember? And I work my way from left to right. And then I'll move to the left and I'll go to the right. Move to the left and go to the right. I'm sort of adding these curves. I want to see what happens. Mm. Gosh. I hope I don't run out of room. Do you think I can make it? You know what? Let's be smart about it. I'm gonna use my paper and I'm going to extend my paper. I'm gonna draw onto two papers instead of one. Why not? Who says we can't? All right. I've got one more. Remember, I moved over. I always, always go up, around, and back down. All right, so let's see what happens here. We'll start here. We can decorate. Let's say we want this spider to get to this spider. Hold up. Keep your finger or your pen on the paper. Take your time working your way through your labyrinth. Can you imagine if this was like made out of um, shrubs or bushes where you couldn't see, you were just following this path? We got it, it works. Now, because I made mine, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legs, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dots. That gave me 16 spots, which made my labyrinth very, very big. So remember, the more detailed your labyrinth seed is, the bigger, bigger, bigger your labyrinth will be. Now, we can do things with this labyrinth. It doesn't have to be just a line um, and, and be boring and simple. We could have, you could draw the path with different patterned lines, dotted line, 
there's something very calming about following a rhythm, following a pattern, even if it's with a dotted line. And he says it has to stay a dotted line. Maybe it changes colors. Maybe it changes the type of line. Maybe I'm going to switch. And I really like this. Let's do green. I haven't used green. And maybe this time it's going to switch into dashes. So my dots are growing. Looks like a highway, doesn't it? Maybe it changes. To, um, we could do a wavy line. I'm not going fast. Ooh, that's where I was running out of space. I'll switch back to the magenta color. Maybe it's stars. I'll switch to spirals. Maybe I do a weird pattern that gets from big to little. Maybe I'll go back to dots to finish it up. And I made it. So, we're creating a labyrinth using a line and a fun way to work your way through your labyrinth is to create a pattern line that works its way through and when you get to the center, then you can follow your path back out. Just 
to the center. There you go. I hope you enjoyed the labyrinth tutorial. And if again, if you haven't seen the Google Slides, I would go back and check that out so that you can see and learn a little bit more. Thanks for watching.